so I wasn't expecting anything this morning and uh, there's another gap so now I gotta try and figure out how to shoot this direction Over the 10 days that I was shooting in the Lofoten Islands, the sun only managed to break through a handful of times. On mornings like the one on January the 20th, all of my apps called for 100% cloud cover and non-stop rain. But if you're going to get any shots of Lofoten in January, you need to learn to ignore the forecast and get up anyway. Part of the reason that the weather is so unpredictable on the Lofoten Islands is that it's located above the Arctic Circle. In addition to constant storms blowing in from all directions, winter photography can be especially challenging due to the short amount of time that the sun is above the horizon. I arrived just barely a week after the polar night had ended, so I usually only had three or four hours of daylight to work with while exploring the islands. On days when the clouds were moving in and there was no sun in the forecast, I would generally head out to explore as soon as it was light, looking for other opportunities close to where I was staying. As you travel south from Rhina, the next village you come to is the small harbor town of Moskenis, which is a convenient place to stay if you take the ferry in from Buda on the mainland. Right below Moskenes, the next town you come to is Sorvagen, where my wonderful Airbnb cabin was located. Traveling even further south, you drive through the small town of Tind before reaching the last village, which apparently is just called O which is Norwegian for stream or small river. There was a large parking lot toward the end of the island, which is generally pretty empty during the winter. Judging from the signs, there are many opportunities to be found on this end of the island during the summer, including camping and hiking the trails that wind through the mountains at the very bottom of the Lofoten Archipelago. fresh snow which is weird that the line would be that finely tuned 
but I'm glad that it is. Like those peaks above Rhina are just white, but the bottom is still melting. So we lost a lot of um, snow right down to the ocean. But you go up a little bit and it's really white. It looks beautiful. So I think there'll still be um, stuff to shoot over the next week. AccuWeather says it's gonna snow. Everybody else says it's gonna rain. So a lot of the snow melted off these peaks. I'm hoping we get more snow today and tomorrow. But it just looks non-stop. I mean, I looked all the way through Thursday a couple times on both apps. I'm not finding any clearing. There's no clearing. Like even at night, it's just constant clouds. Which is mind-boggling that I can do that for four days in a row, but it is what it is. In spite of the fact that the constant rain seemed to be washing away all of the snow that I came to Norway to shoot, I was really looking forward to heading north again, but this time to one of the most popular beaches in Lofoten for photographers. Utiklif Beach is north of Leknes on the island of Vesvorge, and it generally takes at least an hour to get there from Svordvagen. I made two trips to Utiklif during my time on the islands. On the first trip, I was completely alone when I arrived, but I could barely get out of the car due to the howling winds, and it was no use setting up a tripod, as it would have been blown over immediately. On my second trip, I definitely was not alone as several van loads of photographers arrived just after I had parked, and it was more of a challenge to set up shots without other photographers in the way. But after a short hike down the coast to the south, most of the workshop photographers dropped away and I was able to enjoy the amazing coastline alone. So back to my apartment, dinner, and then it looks like my next opportunity, according to models, is at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. So I'll probably get up like two, two thirty, and then drive first, move to Rhina, out towards Fredvang, and just see if I can get any. On the evening of January 17th, I kept sticking my head outside of my door to look at the sky in spite of the forecast for 100% cloud cover from my apps. For most of the night, the sky was overcast with light snow falling, but around 1.30 in the morning, I finally saw some stars. I quickly grabbed my camera and tripod and dashed down the road from my cabin. The break in the clouds was only for about 10 minutes, but even through the bright street lights, I could see the aurora going off directly over my head. I was hoping to jump in the car and find a better place to shoot from, away from the lights, but by the time I got back to the car, the clouds had moved in again and the aurora was gone. 
On the evening of the 20th, I took off at 11.30 p.m. after seeing a break in the weather and set off immediately heading north. Rhina, Sacrosoy, and Hamnoy were completely covered in clouds, so I continued north, checking the conditions at Fredvang, Ramberg, and Viken Beach before finally giving up. Even though the KP index was high, there were just too many clouds. It was near 1 a.m. as I headed back towards the cabin. I had driven for about 30 minutes when I realized that I could see stars as I stopped at a pullout. At first, it looked as if the aurora was gone for the night, but then I turned my camera back toward the north and saw a faint greenish glow in the clouds. As the sky continued to clear, I quickly pulled over at the next pullout and ran down along a small creek, hoping to get some sort of composition before the clouds moved back in. Eventually, a thin green band of light dropped down overhead and over the next hour, I kept shooting as that thin band of light almost took up the entire sky. About two inches of snow last night. This guy's breaking open for just a second. I'm gonna get back up to the tunnel, or the uh, overview, I guess I should say, at Rhina, and then just buzz around and look for shots until these clouds fill back in again. On my last day on the islands, two amazing things happened. First, I woke up to find that it had snowed overnight and the roadways and mountains were once again covered in white. Secondly, the forecast was wrong again and the sun finally broke through several times throughout the day. After shooting the morning light around Sacrosoy and Hamnoy, I headed north to check out the conditions around the Fredvang bridges before continuing up to Skagsandon Beach.
As sunset drew near, I headed back towards Sacrosoy for one last attempt before driving back to the cabin and packing for my trip home. After saying goodbye to my wonderful Airbnb hosts, it was time for the long drive back to Lechness and four flights to LAX. Although I didn't quite get the conditions I was hoping for, I had an amazing time shooting above the Arctic Circle in Norway during the winter. I will definitely be back again, hopefully next winter, followed by a trip in the summer. Before ending this episode, here is a look at a few of the shots that I took during the second half of my trip to the Lofoten Islands. Thank you.